Hey everybody, and welcome back to part three in our series on object-oriented programming in Apex. I'm just going to start off. I got a new uh, new webcam, and uh, so um, it's in a slightly different spot than it used to be. So if I keep looking over, looking in the wrong place, that's what's going on in this video. All right, so today we're talking about abstraction, uh, and abstraction I feel like is not really a I'm going to say just limited to object-oriented programming, but just really kind of a central programming concept in general. I debated whether does it even need its own video or do we just explain it um, as we go into other areas of OO. But I thought, you know what, I mean, it is one of the pillars, one of the principles. So it is probably worth right making a, a short video and where we implement some abstraction in Apex. So let's just take a look, right? If we go to uh, Stackify and we're going to just uh, take a look at their definition of that abstraction, right? One of the key concepts of OOP and um, main goal is to handle complexity by hiding unnecessary details from the user. Now they give a example here and I actually like it of a, of a coffee machine and feel free to log in. Uh, it's a good website if you're not familiar with it. Take a look. Uh, if you want to at the implementation in Java, but I like as uh, somebody that's drinking coffee right now at you know four in the afternoon, I thought, hey, you know what? Let's uh, let's kind of implement the same example in Apex, and I think that'd be a good way to show you what does uh, what does abstraction look like in in the Apex programming language. So enough said. Let's open up IntelliJ, right? And hey, we still got our car from last time. Let's get rid of that stuff. And I'm just going to go through here and get rid of anything we don't need. Anything, and no, nope, anonymous Apex. Uh, although we could certainly use a car, the car example for abstraction. We're going to do a coffee machine. All right, so we are, we're cleared out and ready to start over. And you know what? So let's say we're going to make a coffee. Okay, so let's make a, I'm going to make a coffee drinker first. Okay, I'm going to make a and just make a coffee drinker class. And this coffee drinker is going to be the consumer of our, we're just gonna give them a method, public static void drink coffee. All right, and that's all there is to it. All right, and I'm gonna compile that. So when we're all done, our coffee drinker is going to be the consumer of the output of our coffee machine. And the idea being that the coffee drinker, just like if you are, you know, you come down in the morning and you hit the button, the brew button on your coffee machine that makes coffee and you don't know it. I, I don't know how to bake a coffee machine. I don't really know what's going on in there. I mean, it's some high level, right? I know it's, it's heating the water and it's dripping the water, but I couldn't tell you the first thing about how it's actually functioning. Uh, so we're going to just kind of model that through Apex code. So this is you or me or whoever, right? We want a cup of coffee. So let's um, let's say to make coffee, first I'm going to say we need a couple things. We're, we need coffee beans. So if you're coding along with me, these are just going to be really almost some stub classes. Right? Um, and we're going to give this one a... Public string name. We're just gonna give it a, a name property, and we'll do. And in our last video, right? We want to encapsulate our variables. Best practice. Private set. All right. So we have a coffee beans, and you know, let's say we need what else? We need to give our coffee. We needs water, so we're gonna make a water class. And I think that's it. We are just going to, we're not even going to give our water class uh, any properties right now. So let's go. Let's make our coffee pot. Coffee maker, right? Apex class. Coffee maker. And let's see. And the last thing is we're kind of just going through and generating these classes. So a coffee maker needs to make coffee, and we don't have any coffee for it to make. So Apex class, let's make a coffee class. Coffee. And uh, you know, we're gonna give this one a we'll give this one a name too. Public 
string name and again we'll make it get private set oh, we'll encapsulate that away and now back to our coffee maker okay so what does a coffee maker need to do so first of all right it needs water and coffee beans to produce coffee so we're going to say that our coffee maker has a um, public public coffee beans beans. All right. In fact, you know what? We're just going to make these private. We're going to make these variables private. All right. And we're just going to set them through the constructor. Private, water, water. And now we're going to make a public coffee maker. So if you remember our first video on object-oriented programming, we did constructors. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make our constructor. And you remember your constructor always has the same name as your class. And a constructor is a special type of method in object-oriented programming that constructs the object. So we're going to say that our coffee maker needs um, coffee beans, beans, and water, water. All right. And then we're going to say this dot beans, beans, and this dot water equals water. Then we're going to say, let's, so what is it we need to make up? We're going to make a private uh, void, uh, void, let's see, grind beans. We've got to grind the beans. So private void grind beans. Um, and we're just going to say, we'll just print to the debug log, right? Um, is this is not debug. We're going to say grinding the and beans dot, beans dot name. Okay. Then we need a private. We're just going to make it void again. We're not going to return anything. Heat water. We're just going to say, just going to debug. Heating the water. And then our last thing we need is we're going to then do a private. What do we want to call this one? I'm trying to decide if I were, I'm thinking about how I want to design this myself right now as I write this. So uh, probably if I stop and think for a little bit, I'm going to just say private, and this is going to return, you know what, it's not going to return anything. I'm just going to have it be part of the internal mechanism of our coffee maker. And then we're just going to say, I'm going to call this one the make coffee. And we're just going to say debug. It is dripping the water on the beans dot name, right? All right, so that's at a high level, right? That's, we're making coffee, right? We, I don't know why this, I keep, uh, it's throwing me off because uh, my editor keeps underlining stuff in red when there's, which makes me, which normally is telling me there's something wrong, but it's like my, uh, my processor's just running a little slow, I'm sucking up too much memory or something today. All right, so now that we've got, so we have these three private methods, right? And because they're private, that means 
nobody that's using our coffee maker class, they don't have access to that. These are, these are like the internal guts of the coffee maker class. Nobody can call coffeemaker.grindbeans. They can't call coffeemaker.heatwater. These are the internal mechanisms that handle the state, modify the data inside the coffee maker. So let's give it one more public method that's going to return coffee, public coffee, brew coffee. Okay. And now we're going to say grind beans, heat water. And make coffee. And now once that's all done, we're going to say, you know what? I think we're actually going to, now nah, we'll just do it that simple now. So we're just going to down here. We're just going to say, You know what? Yeah, we're going to have the make coffee. I feel like it makes more sense to have the make coffee method return the coffee, right? Like, I feel like that's where it should happen from. You could do it up there, but I'm just going to say return new coffee. Yeah, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to do it this way. New, new coffee. All right. And I can't remember. Coffee even, do our coffee class even have any properties? As a name. Okay. So let's new coffee. And we're going to just give it a name of, we're, we're just for right now, we're going to name it after the uh, beans.name. This is constructor not defined. Oh yeah, you know what? I never actually gave it. A, I never gave the coffee class constructor, right? Um, how about so we're gonna do all right? So string name and this dot name equals name. And what about coffee beans? I didn't give coffee beans a constructor either. All right, so public coffee beans string name and then this dot name equals name. All right, so this is the real process of programming too, half the time. Uh, I've been doing this for a while and I still make these kind of simple little mistakes and I, I go back and forth and like, should I edit them out of the videos or redo it so I look like I'm a better developer than I am, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to roll, let it go live. Um, and then I'm just going to, we'll say that a new coffee and we're just going to say fresh coffee. Okay. Should all compile. No, I won't, because I didn't put a return statement in there. It will not compile. Return coffee. Now let's try it. So we got a problem here. What is going on? Coffee, coffee. New constructor not defined. Well, I think it certainly is. Didn't we just define our coffee constructor? Try to compile it again. Sometimes your classes get out of sync. Okay, so coffee is compiled. Now let's try to recompile. Variable does not exist. Name. All 
All right, let's try to compile this one now that we have. And back to Coffee Maker, recompile. And let's take a minute and talk about what is going on. So now we need our, we need our final return statement. So we're gonna say, and then return. Oh, well, we already have make coffee up there, right? So we don't need to, I'm gonna call it again, but return make coffee. All right. Now let's get rid of those extra spaces. So sometimes when you are, remember, so Apex is a compiled language, meaning that the Salesforce compiler is breaking this down into machine level language that the machine can understand. Sometimes when you're compiling your classes and their dependencies can get out of sync. Um, and that is what you just saw happen. If we had one class that's saying, hey, you know what, you're telling me that I need to use the coffee bean name property. But when I look in the compiled version, like I don't see any reference. I don't see any symbol for that that I can reference. So even though you could look at your code and go, what, what are you talking about? It's right here. Um, usually that's your, your compilation got out of sync and it's a pain. Uh, what you just saw me do is what you have to do. So I also recommend compile often. Um, so that doesn't, I mean, it's going to happen, but it definitely helps uh, head that problem off, right? So now let's say if we have our coffee drinker, now that we have everything made, we could just say coffee drinker and we have a coffee class. Um, coffee. Coffee. Um, and then system, let's go in there, system.debug. I am drinking a fresh cup of coffee, coffee.me. Let's compile. And now let's just go to anonymous Apex and let's just start let's build this up so we need we're going to say water water equals new water we didn't give water any properties at all coffee beans and uh, we're going to say dark roast equals new coffee beans and we'll say that these are it's not a name so we can do it like this New dark roast, whatever. That's the name of our. Okay, so we got our water. We got our beans. We need a coffee drinker. What you know? So what we're gonna? So let's say coffee drinker. Brooks equals new coffee drinker. And. You see me here, right? I'm like, oh, did I? There's no parameters to that one, just the method. I can't remember. I wrote it five minutes ago and I already can't remember what I put inside it. And I capitalized a, a variable name. How terrible. You didn't see me do that. Um, okay. So now we're going to say Brooks. Why am I not getting my drink coffee method? Coffee drinker. Uh, you know what? Because I made it a static method. I didn't. I didn't remember I did that. Let's get rid of that stuff. This is so embarrassing, right? I wrote this code like five minutes ago, and I already can't remember coffee. <laughs> but okay, I'm going to see like what I did. I'm going to pivot. Let's pivot. I'm going to turn that into a teaching moment because that's a static method, and I had instantiated the coffee drinker class. Remember, because I had said new coffee drinker. And anytime you see the new keyword, that means you instantiated the class, you instantiated an object. So because I, you can't call a static method on an instance of an object, you have to call it like this, coffee drinker dot drink coffee. And then we're gonna say, we need to make our coffee maker. Let's say we're gonna do coffee maker, maker equals new coffee maker. 
Uh, let's see. We need what? Um, maybe it's the dark roast beans and the water. And then, because our drink coffee method accepts a coffee parameter, and the maker dot brew coffee returns a cup of coffee, you could do it like this, right? Because remember, so drink coffee, coffee drinker dot drink coffee has a coffee parameter, and coffee maker dot brew coffee returns coffee. So you could just write it like this. Instead of do, you could do, you know, coffee, coffee to drink equals, you know, maker.brew coffee and then pass it in. But we're going to do it this. I'll show you how to do it the other way. Let's just hit execute and see what we get in our debug log. Let's do debug only. Okay, so we can see, hey, we are grinding the dark roast, heating the water. We're dripping the water on the dark roast. And I am drinking a fresh of coffee. So everything worked. Everything worked. So in our, when we talk about abstraction, right, the idea being here is that our coffee drinker did not need to know anything about how the coffee maker worked. It did not need to know any of these methods. It couldn't access any of these methods, right? They were all private. Uh, these, remember, these properties were all private. All the coffee drinker class, which wanted to consume the type of coffee, Remember, Apex is a statically typed language, and this is a type of coffee. It wanted to come, so the coffee drinker class is a consumer of a coffee object. To create the coffee object, all that this code needed to know how to do, this developer, this person in my case, if I'm making my morning coffee, was called maker.brewcoffee, and it got coffee back. It did not need, so this is a great example when you are building APIs, or you're, build, you know, you're building a package, something where... You're going to, people are going to just have access through one point and you are going to abstract away all the complexity and nobody else, need, none of the consumers of your product really need to know the internal working. So that's what we're doing with abstraction. And that's really all it is. Um, so yeah, that was making a coffee maker in Apex with a few uh, bumps along the way. Hopefully they were useful. So hopefully you learned a little something about uh getting your code out of sync with compiling and that sometimes you're sucking up too much memory and your editor's telling you you make mistakes when you didn't, but that's all part of the process. And I think it's good if you are learning this to see the, the raw unedited version um, versus the, the perfect version. That's kind of like, I always see like when you watch a fishing show and all they ever do is catch fish and they don't show you the 12 hours of, uh, I don't want to. I, I want to make programming videos where you where you see me standing on the boat for twelve hours, you know, waiting to catch the fish. Not just when I not just when I've got a bite. So I hope this was useful. Uh, if it was, take a second, hit like and subscribe. And I'm excited. Uh, next week we're going to start doing I think the really cool stuff. We're going to be doing interfaces, virtual classes, abstract classes, inheritance, composition, all the really awesome features of object-oriented programming. So stay tuned, keep practicing, and I will talk to everybody.